A new study from the Royal Veterinary Corps says a kiss from your dog could be dangerous. Well, you know, I, I, I think most people would assume that it's, it's uh, you know, unpleasant or unhygienic, but actually dangerous. Dr Sean Frosini is a lecturer at the Royal Veterinary College and was a researcher on this study. So, so uh, Sean, thanks for coming on. Uh, Dr Frosini, danger in, uh, dangerous in what way? Thank you. Um, so I think I would say dangerous to some, but not all. So realistically, the work we did, which was funded by the Medical Research Council, was really looking at this concept of antimicrobial resistance and looking for bacteria that have these resistances, which mean that antibiotics, which we would normally use to treat infections, wouldn't work against them. And we were screening pets and their owners within the same household to see whether they carried the same bacteria and to start talking about whether there's some sharing going on within the home environment. So there's oh, a lot of, okay. there's so, a lot there about hospitals. We, we know right. about hospitals and the risk in hospitals, but we were sort of going back into the home environment and looking for risk in the home environment. OK, so you're, in layman's terms, your, your, your dog could be carrying sort of resistant, uh, you know, antibiotic-resistant elements, which by licking the face of their owners, they could pass to their owners. Yes, basically. So we know that there are bacteria carried within the gut of us and our pets, all, all animals, all people, mm. it's the same thing. And so we were screening samples, fecal samples from owners and their pets and looking for these bacteria. And we found out of around 80 households, so that was 110 people and yeah. about 100 animals, we found four households where both the owner and the pet at the same time had one of these types of resistant bacteria. Mm -hmm. um, and we actually found in two of those households that those bacteria, when we looked at their genetics, were exactly the same okay. between the owner and the dog. Right. So you could say there's some sharing going on. What you can't say from the work that we had mm -hmm. done is what direction it was going in. So we couldn't say it was go it was potentially sharing from pet to the owner. It could also be going from the owner to the pet. Through the and that's where there's still a question. Well, not necessarily, but through any contact. So actually, okay. this is where hygiene, that traditional old adage of having good hygiene, when handling your pets and other animals is really important. So yeah. it could be through touching them. We know that we can get faecal contamination. We know these bacteria can be shed into the environment as well. There's plenty of research out there mm. in the environment itself, not just by carrying in, in um, the gut. So yeah. there's lots of different avenues, and we can't say that face licking is the only thing. And certainly um, contact with the pets was one of the things that we looked at. So mm. we had questionnaires that went to the owners about how much mm. they had. We didn't specifically say, does your pet lick your face? But we talked about getting kisses from your pets. So that could be on the hands or the face, because yeah. obviously we're often touching our, ha our faces Could, and things like that. Couldn't there be a benefit in the sense that, you know, dogs can you know, drink water out the puddles, you know, lick their, you know, lick their, you know, <laughs> fellow dogs' fundaments, eat any old rubbish and apparently, you know, off the floor and apparently live to tell the tale? I mean, in a way, they're made of girders. I mean, if they passed well, a bit of that on to us, then that wouldn't be the worst thing, would it? Well, these bacteria have been readily found in human hospitals for actually almost decades now. So this isn't a new bacteria that we're seeing in the humans. These are yeah. bugs that are causing pathogens, that are causing disease in humans in hospitals now. And the, the reason why we're doing this research, the question we're asking is the role of pets, because this has become the new mm -hmm. avenue for research, because we're starting to see these pathogens in pets. Okay. It's a relatively new finding. So I guess... Um, even a healthy human might be carrying mm. these bacteria. We found humans in this study who were carrying the bacteria and didn't know about it. It's, it's perfectly okay. natural to have bacteria and some of them might be resistant. And if you're a healthy individual, then that's fine. The issue comes when if you have somebody who lives in that mm. household who maybe has something that makes them more susceptible to infection, yeah. then they're at higher risk. But they're going to be at higher risk for these resistant bugs and for the okay. normal bacteria there in the gut as well. Right. So it's the same risk. OK, just um, don't go away, Sean. I sort of bring yeah. in John Woodbridge, who's a non-licky. Who's a non-licky, but in the family... <laughs> I mean, your missus does allow your dog to lick the face. She, well, she does occasionally. Just first, the agent, whose idea was it to have this item so close to lunchtime? Not, not mine, but we're restricted <laughs> no. given the schedule. Well, I mean, we couldn't move it along, so I, I apologise for that. No, I mean... Absolutely. I mean, it's quite, I mean, it's quite straightforward and sensible why you don't like your dog licking your face. Well, it is to be. I've seen I've seen uh, dogs in the past that have actually 
sort of reached round as it's as, as oh. it's going for its number two to actually collect it before it's even touched the, <laughs> oh, touched God, the ground. God, God. So, okay. so you know, I've actually seen this. I'm not making it up. And um, right. and so yeah, and you know, I've seen I have seen dogs uh, eating their own excrement. Yeah. So there's that also we've and got a terrier, and so it's so generally like rat. You know, so it can be a ratting dog. Uh, you, your expert there probably tell us whether you know chewing on chewing on vermin and then bring it and then come back into the home and. Licking yeah. people's faces. I mean, that doesn't sound particularly hygienic yes, either. Yes, interesting. Dr. Um, F- Dr. Frosini, let me put that to her. So <laughs> if your dog's been chewing on a rat, dead or alive, or doing God knows what with God knows whose excrement, I mean, is that on the tongue if it comes, you know, half an hour later when it starts licking your face? Or do, do it, do, do it, does its mouth, do its mouth juice sort of dissipate the filth? So potentially, so potentially those bacteria might still be there if there were bacteria um, on, on the vermin. But also the mouth is full of bacteria. So we're concentrating in this study on the gut and sort of the back end of the animal. But our mouth, our pet's mouths, are full of bacteria. If you get a deep bite wound from an animal, you might need antibiotics because the ba- mouth naturally has bacteria in it. All of our body is colonised by bacteria. Yeah. And a lot of those bacteria could go on to cause infections. So, yes, all of these things pose some level mm. of risk. Okay. Um, and the reason for our study, if I'm saying there's some risk, is because the bacteria we found are actually harder to treat with the antibiotics okay. we have oh, on okay. the shelf. So, so your wife, John, I mean, she, she presumably she sees what you see in the park, and, but she lets, the, <laughs> she lets your, your terrier lick her face. Well, well, you know, let's be honest. It's sort of like minor kisses on the cheeks. You know, we're not going for anything more and um, more involved than that. But um, <laughs> yeah, she will realise she's had dogs yeah. all of her life, so she, okay. so she does understand. But um, but the other thing is, you know, what dogs eat generally doesn't smell particularly good. And first thing in the morning, yeah. when you you know you go to kiss the wife before we've all brushed our teeth, you know, yeah. we often avoid that, don't we? So same thing with the dog. Why yeah. is a dog chew into its mm. pedigree chum? Mm. And um, also, and then going for mm. you know anywhere near your nose, and I don't know, I mean, it just uh, so it's once, not right, is it? So once your 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 wife has been kissing the dog, do you then yes. not kiss your wife for a certain amount of time? Well, I get a pack of wet wipes out, and she has to um, she has to give herself a good three or four of those. I know they're not environmentally that friendly, but yeah. Um, okay. but yes, yeah, absolutely, yes. Yeah, she, okay. she needs All to she needs to have a good clean up. So right, if she wants some. to kiss you, she's got to have a wipe down. Go for a white yes. down Okay, yes, all right. Yes, Good no, policy. No, Look, John, thanks very okay. much for uh, for joining us. Um, Sean, I did wonder actually. I I had COVID the other week. Couldn't get out of bed, and I was alone with my dog, and it kept coming up and licking my face to wake me up. But I had a big cold sore at the time. I mean, could I have transferred anything to my dog? So I can't speak specifically about COVID because that's not in my area. Not COVID. Research, I was talking about the, her- the general, herpes, actually. The cold yeah, so, sore. Yes. So, so again, I'm not. I'm not a virologist, but right. but the principle of disease is that some some pathogens are very host specific. So they like a particular host. So they like humans, say, mm-hmm. and so we won't see transmission between a human and a pet okay. because they're just so right. adapted to the human. And you haven't got a dog, but if you but you did have one, you wouldn't let it lick your face, would you? No, personally, no. But you've got fish, haven't you? The fish. I've got fish. Yes, I do. But my they fish don't, don't they're not my lickers, face. are they? <laughs> no, not generally. No. Um, but I think I think it all comes down to a question of your. Or where do you draw the line with the hygiene okay. measures? Because I think that's the same across all of our life. OK, got it. Thank you very much indeed, Dr Sean Frosini from the Royal Veterinary College.